Hi, I'm Greg Smith. And I'm Scott Hovey. We are Adelbert Brewery. And you're watching The Beer Diaries. Cheers. Cheers. Rolling fast down I 35. Hey folks, I'm Greg Zestrick from The Beer Diaries, here with Greg Smith of Albert's Brewery. Of course, we're sitting in the middle of their uh, bottling line. Well, fortunately, it's not on right now. We're, we're talking about beer, Delberts, and all kinds of cool stuff about beer. So thanks. Appreciate you uh, being on camera with us. Sure. sure and this sure. is uh, obviously, you know, a pretty, pretty cool operation. You guys have been around for about nine months or so. Is That's that... right. Yeah. Since uh, selling since December. Yeah. As far as, as, far as the goals with, with what you guys, you guys had, like, what, was the, what was the inspiration? Like, what was it that made you think, hey, let's make, let's make this happen? So, uh, well, Scott, uh, Scott really was the, the original one with the inspiration, but the, the, the idea is, uh, you know, Austin needs good beer. Yeah, yeah. I think that we need to, uh, we need to raise the standard of beer that's available in Austin. You know, I've been here for 20 something years now, uh, and it's been a while coming you yeah. know, to have a real big craft beer scene here. And it's, and it's really started now, hasn't it? Like it's, yeah, it's it really, like you guys, yeah. you guys came in, you're kind of riding this wave that it kind of, it's really starting to catch up now. Like I think there's a number, a number of amazingly good breweries out and making great beer. It's really, really powerful. Yeah, there's a, there's a, a, a good community here. Uh, yeah. You know, it's very, very strong community of, of beer lovers, I think, and, and craft brewers. And what, what the hope is, is that we can grow the, the entire scene. So not just Austin, Texas as right. well. Uh, and certainly in Austin, you make it some kind of destination for, for beer lovers. And the community itself, I mean, I, uh, talking to some of the other brewers, we've been through mm -hmm. quite a few brewers already, mm -hmm. everyone gets along really well. It's like sort of like this, you know, there's a bit of competition, but it's actually, you know, really, really supportive at the same time. Folks help each other out. Like, what, what is that? What's, what's going on there? Well, I think, like I said, the, the, the whole idea is to make this a destination for craft beer lovers. So, you know, there's, there's other places around the country where you know you're going to get good craft beer around the Denver area, right, right. you know, Portland, yep. uh, different areas. Uh, you know, if you go to San Diego, there's good beer there. Uh, and people go there specifically for that, you know, and, and I think we're building this community here that, that we can support that type of uh, business. Yeah. And so w one thing I noticed when you guys started up, you were pretty aggressive. Like it was like, mm -hmm. you know, suddenly you guys, it wasn't just one or two beers. I think there's like... I mean, fairly quickly, six beers available. Right. A lot of Belgian styles, so definitely a little more challenging ones to make. What yeah. was the what was the impetus to sort of focus on the Belgians and be really aggressive with the number of beers? As so, well? so our our idea is is more of a high end brewery. Uh, you know, there's lots of people out making IPAs, uh, you know, pale ale, things like that. Uh, we wanted to focus on something different and focus the beer around the food. You know, Belgians yeah. are, go very well with various foods. You do some pairing with that. You know, cheeses, different different uh, types of foods. That's where the Belgians kind of stand out. And actually, it's funny you mentioned that. I was I was at Whippin yesterday, and I had the Dancing Monk with some nachos. And I I, I mentioned to the person I was sitting with, saying, "Man, said, this this beer goes so well with food. Right. It was really a delicious. It had a, it had a real nice nice complimentary flavor to it." Yeah, and all our we try to make all our beers fairly balanced. So it's 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 a malt pour beer. It's a Belgian yeah. beer. Uh, it's not heavy in the hops. You know, it's not something that's a. Uh, a you know, a fad, you know, it, it, yeah. we're trying to build beers that are going to last, uh, you know, stand the test of time. One, yeah, one's off the traditional, I mean, these recipes are hundreds of years old, and so, right. so you guys have, have real authentic styles. I mean, and ingredients, you're bringing stuff in from, from Belgium as far as malts? And well, so we get all our, our malts from Czech Republic, oh, Czech. so they're all floor malted, you know, high, high quality bohemian malts. Yeah. Uh, hops come from there as well, you know, some of the, some of the malt uh, and hops, I mean, some of the hops come from Germany because we yeah. use the Halatara as well. But so everything comes from overseas. You know, we're using high quality bottles, you know, uh, authentic Belgian style bottles, uh, cork and basket. Yeah, you're corking it, yeah, cork yeah. and basket. So, yeah. you know, we're trying to stay true to the style of, of the Belgian beer. Yeah, one thing that's cool, I mean, we're, you're right in front of your bottling line. Mm -hmm. So, right off the beginning, you guys were bottling, not just putting on draft, but you had bottles going. That's like my first experience was actually, I think we had a Scratch and Hippo and something else day, you know, I think day two after they came out, right. our little beer club. And it was like, we're like, hey, awesome! Another great, great brewery. Like yeah. this, this is a key part. You said right at the beginning, you guys were bought. Oh yeah, it is, and actually, it surprised us. So, you surprised know, you? How did it surprise well, you? Well, it surprised us because normally, typically, 
breweries come out and they, they do draft first, yeah, you know, yeah. and they get their name out there, try out the beers, people in draft, they want to go buy it, so then they'll start bottling. We came out with bottles initially yeah. uh, because of labeling issues, <laughs> actually our oh, bottles really? were available first, oh, that's interesting. and so we went on and started selling those when we could, and, and it kind of exploded from there. That's so. awesome. Like, all, and then right now we're sitting in your, I think it's, it, it's it, as you said, you're conditioning your beers in here, right. so it's kind of your conditioning room, which these are, pardon me, <laughs> what a gaff! I haven't been drinking yet today. Actually, I was this morning, but I'll, I'll have some a little later when we talk about beers. But I mean, these are real kegs full of stuff. So you, this is where you're conditioning and cooling the things. Right. Or, I mean, you're shipping from here. Right. This this room, people can't see. It's full of beer. Like yeah. I, I was actually really surprised coming in here, just how much is sitting here. Like, yeah. How, how wide is your distribution now? Like you're probably serving beyond Austin, I heard as well. So yeah, we're in Houston, San Antonio, Dallas area. So we're slowly expanding. Well, slowly. We're probably <laughs> take <laughs> as slowly as we can, just yeah. because it's a it's a long trip. But since we're self distributing yeah uh, you know it, it takes a guy to drive beer there yeah uh, so I mean self distributing is a, a pretty bold move too like I mean there's distributors that often are out there to help you out what was what was the reason to go with self distributing to kind of do it yourself well I think you know to be able to touch the customer more so so initially we got to build the brand yeah you know, that's that's kind of the first step is, is building that that awareness of Adelbert's out there yeah making sure that we're approaching the customers with with a, you know somewhat of you know personal appeal to them yeah for our beer and um, so that that allows us to do that you can do that with as a distributor with using a distributor as well but it just you know it seemed to be the right move and then you know certainly there's there's a monetary aspect behind that too you know there, yeah you say more of the more of the revenue yeah right? I mean you're you're paying a distributor to do that so initially it, you know until we get to the point where we just can't physically handle that or we think it makes sense uh, you know we'll, we'll then move to a distributor and we've we've talked to a couple but it just doesn't seem to be the right time yet right so, so just describing for the the viewer some of the room we're in here. Like I said, there's there's literally just huge pallets of beer all along this wall. Right. Bunch of kegs here. You can see the the big you know big automated bottling line behind us. There's another room next door, the brew house. Looks like a pretty pretty good sized brew house there. Yeah. So, and then you said beyond that, you guys are going to actually be expanding into some additional space. Simply, I mean, for storage, you got like, you know, stuff stuff to keep places. You got so well, much yeah, going bottle, on. Bottle, bottles, the grains. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably do some barrel aging in there as well, which we're going to start a barrel uh, project as well. Oh, cool. So you're uh, going to start doing doing barrel aging. Yeah. That's a real trend right now. I know a lot of folks in Austin area are, are, are thinking, hey, like like Jester King's obviously been doing it for a bit, but a lot of other folks are thinking, let's let's see, you know, what what can we do to get more character out of our beers? That's right. one of the things you right. can do. Yeah, and I think it's, I mean, you know, it's it's just a progression. Yeah. You know? And and we're we like beer, we like good beer, <laughs> and so you know if we can do something in a barrel that's going to taste a little different or oh, yeah. be a little, have a little more character to it, you know, that's all cool. for it. So. Are you are you planning on any more of styles beyond the base six right now, or is there? Is, I think on the web, I think I saw a little bit of some future possibilities. Yeah, there. I mean we've we've toyed around with that. There's uh, there's a couple that we've toyed around with, you know, without meaning to, you know, a couple <laughs> times, but uh, <laughs> made a couple of sours, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So you know we're probably going to look at some sours, yeah, uh, awesome. you know, as, as one thing. But but initially, you know, as we're as we're growing so quickly in our distribution, you know, we want to make sure that the base beer, yeah. the base six are there, and so, the consistency is there, right. all, all that. So once we do that, we're going to start expanding out. Well, I mean, uh, speaking frankly, I mean, considering the demand and how broad you guys are, there's probably not a lot of time to experiment right now. Like, I mean, you actually, guys, the the brew house is big enough. We have enough capacity. We can do probably, you know, five batches a month. Which uh, you know, if we're pushing the brew house, yeah, yeah, and we have room to expand fermenters. Okay, so to. so in other words, you could you could actually go, you could be yeah, we could. I mean, we we could get about twenty five hundred barrels a year of the current setup. Right, right. Uh, and just by expanding fermenters, we can grow that. Oh, so, cool. So you got yeah. some. Got we some got some. Capacity. We got some capacity. Yeah. Uh, it's just a matter of, of doing that at the right time. Oh, that's that makes great. Sense. So one of the things that's been really interesting being here in Austin is, is this, the, the beer scene in Austin has really right. exploded. Like, yeah. you know, you guys want to make great beer, and you've been doing that. I mean, a lot of other folks are, and the best part is people are enjoying it. Yeah. Like, what What are you seeing from a consumer perspective with what's going on here? Well, I'd say especially with the, um, I, I think with the younger, I've got a 25 year old son who's big into the the beer scene, and, yeah. and you know, so there's lots of good beers out there now, lots of choices where before there wasn't. You know, you you had a, a few choices from out of state, but yeah. uh, you know, here locally there wasn't that much just yeah. just 10 years ago. You know, so now there's there's quite a few choices or more coming on. Yeah, I yeah. think that's good for the uh, the whole industry here. What are, what are some of your your favorites? Other favorites from around town here? Anyone in particular that stands uh, out to you? You know, the Jester guys have have some good stuff yeah, going on. I think. Sure. Um, you know, all those all the guys. Uh, Live Oak, uh, you know, has a couple of really good beers. Delicious stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so uh, 
Beer Works, good friends of ours. Yeah. So, you know, they're, they're just in the general close. areas. Yeah, like, right. I mean, like, like you're here, Circle's not far, Beer Works, it's pretty, it's, it's almost like a little beer mecca in the Yeah, it is. So we're kind of the northern contingent, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's so, a southern guy, in case yeah. you have like one of those rivalries, the yeah, north south, yeah. meet somewhere in downtown and have that's a beer right. off and have a contest or something. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots of good beer out there. Oh, I mean, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. That's the key. I think that, you know, in order to, to make this a strong, you know, craft beer scene, yeah. we have to make good beer. And Absolutely. it's not just us, it's the other guys as well. Yeah, so, everyone, everyone has to, and, and in, sense, in a sense, it's a positive competitive thing mm -hmm. where everyone makes great beer and it kind of brings it all up to another level, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, we, we love to see great beer from the other local guys. Yeah. That's and we trade with them quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I, that's one of those guilty pleasures is yeah, getting exactly. those bottles of things and samples. I mean, we've been very lucky to get behind the scenes and try things out of kegs and casks and all kinds yeah. of crazy stuff. So it's pretty pretty neat experience. Yeah. Um, one thing I was curious about was the future. What do you think the future is going to hold? Are there going to be more breweries coming online? Is there going to be just more growth in this market? Like, what do you, how do you envision it? Like, especially in the context of, you know, craft beer still being a very small amount of the beer drunk. Do you think there's like, going to be like there's still just lots of opportunity? For I think growth? there's a lot of opportunity. I, I think that you know eventually there will be some attrition based on you know if you're making good beer or not. I yeah. think that's where the real key is. As long as, as the new breweries coming out are making good beer, I think they can be successful. And us too, you know, it's got to continue. So Yeah, you got to keep that uh, You know, you, it's, it's, uh, it's been pretty easy to get new customers. Right. You know, the, the key is to, 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 to get long-term customers, have right. people repeat, you know, purchase your, your product. So, uh, and the key to that is making good beer. And so one, another interesting dimension to, to you guys is both you and Scott aren't, you know, Super long-term professional beer makers. In, right. fa in fact, you're both kind of tech guys, right. you know. And yeah. so, so you guys reached a point in your career. She you said, "Hey, you know, maybe it's time for some passion. You know, you know, come back into something new and different." And what was that like? I mean, you said, "Okay, I'm going to throw caution in the wind. I'm going to open a brewery." Like, what was what was that like? Well, it was it was fun. I mean, it's still fun. I think that it's such a different environment than than what we were used to. Yeah. Um, but you know, with the economy the way it's been for the past few years, yeah. with the uh, the growth of craft craft beer in yeah. America and in Texas, uh, it just seemed to be the right time. You know, it, there, there was an opportunity there, and uh, you know, luckily Scott caught the fever before I did and, and pulled me along with him. But uh, and Scott was Scott was really he was the kind of the brewing side of it. Like he's he's really into into right, brewing and he was kind right. of home brewing for a while and really yeah. getting into it. Yeah, and so he developed all the recipes at home. That's why we came out with six yeah. beers. He, and he you guys are both beer. engineers, I think. You yeah. said. So that's that. So that's why the brew house is so amazing. Yeah, so you, gotta, you apply actually, that engineering kind of like know-how. It actually helps, you know. Yeah, oh no, it does help. Because you know, there's lots of repairs, lots of yeah, maintenance, yeah. and and so lots of things you have to figure out. Yeah, it's and as not, engineers, uh, you know, you know, like the nuts and bolts of these these things. Yeah. That's really cool. And so you think, um, as far as far as future expansion, you know, I think you, you've talked a little bit about some getting into kegs and, and those sort of casks and, 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 right. and oak aging and that sort of thing. You know, how, how aggressive are you guys going to be there? You think you'll come up with all new recipes? Are you going to try and sort of tweak some of your existing I stuff? Think, you know, we've talked about a number of things. So I think there'll be some new recipes, but I think also we'll probably try some different spices and some of the things yeah, we do, do yeah. some seasonal kind of things, and maybe some collaborations, you know, we're interested in doing that as well. That's a real interesting one. I, I don't know, I haven't seen, I can't think of a whole lot of collaborations with other breweries yet within on the Austin scene. And, right. But when you, and then, but if you look out into the into the brewing world, I mean, a lot of the, guy, the California guys collaborate a lot, often coast to coast, that sort of well, thing. Well, yeah, and Jester's collaborated with Mickler. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so they, they've done one, but yeah, I think everybody here has been Caught up in their own, <laughs> caught, their own thing, trying, trying to, to catch up. Yeah, trying to catch up on the amazing demand. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, so a, wonder, that's it's kind a wonderful where problem been. to have. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a That'd that's a key. I think that you know we want to encourage you know working together with the other brewers as well. Yeah. I think that that's 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 all part of it. One other thing that obviously comes into play with with making beer here in Texas is some of the laws around beer. There's some some kind of idiosyncrasies, let's call them, is, yeah. and, and you know some of the things like the fact that you know you guys actually can't sell beer on site. Like I couldn't come here and buy a bottle from you. Right. You know, other states you can. I'm actually Canadian. I can do that in, in certain parts of Canada. H how much of an effect is that on your business? Is that is it's not just specifically that 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 example, but the you know the, the laws here around beer in Texas. Is well, that it, it's certainly a limiting factor. I mean, if you go to somewhere, we just came back from. California mm -hmm. recently went to see Stone yeah uh, you know huge place great beer selling on site with a restaurant yeah. plus distributing so you know you're limited to either distributing your beer or selling on site right and there's limitations that are good and bad to both yeah, yeah. Uh, I think there's a place for both but you know certainly opening up the, the market to to, to share that a little bit, yeah, yeah. and then also opening up Texas market to, to beers from other places. So that's another limiting factor. Is you know it's a, there's a there's a barrier, monetary barrier for people to bring 
beers into Texas. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to write, well, try and wide a range of beers, but you know, and, and so we're for you know free market, you know, kind of yeah, <laughs> kind of yeah. thing. We're you know let let the best beer win, kind of thing. You know, let's uh, let's open it up. Let's make sure that uh, you know we have the freedom to do what we need to do to grow our business. Right. Uh, right. And then you know we'll compete against uh, the, whoever's out there and and win our win our customers the old-fashioned way. Yeah, you know. that's great. So. Yeah, well, that's that's awesome stuff. So thanks a lot for the conversation. We covered a lot of topics and you know really some some great stuff. Wish you guys yeah. all the luck. We're gonna I'm gonna try some beers. I think with 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 Scott in a few minutes here. You know, I've been doing some my, some my own personal research, of course, <laughs> before before coming out here. Uh, you know, I've been I've been trying them. Like I said, I was really impressed. Things the Dancing Monk is is the double. Right. Was, you know, awesome with nachos. Like the you know just the, the like you said the food and beer pairings um, are really good, and just the beers, of course, themselves are really. Yeah, solid. I think that's another future thing for us as well. Let's yeah. try to get more into that. So, you know, as we mature, as we develop the beers. Yeah. You know, one of the one of the focuses is going to be more on the restaurant side or more on the the yeah. pairing side and, and doing some things like that because I think that's. That's one of the great things about Belgians. That's one of the reasons yeah. I love Belgians. Yeah, they so, go very, very well with yeah. all kinds of food, too, like yeah. a big wide range. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you Absolutely. taking the time. It's been a wonderful experience. Enjoyed it. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, folks. Greg Zestrick here from the Beer Diaries here at Adelbert's Brew with Scott Hovey, your brewmaster here. You know, we're talking about some beers. It should be a lot of fun. Yes. And so your, your background, you're an engineer by background. Correct, electrical engineer. And how does that affect the brewing process? Has that been something that's affected how you made the brew house, how you brew? Well, you know, brewing's a very complex task. There's a lot of, um, you know, microbiology and uh, chemistry, but also all the equipment is, you know, electrical, three-phase power, a lot of controls, uh, you know, control panels controlling the process. So yeah. having an electrical engineering background really helped out a lot in debugging and, uh, you know, daily operating things. How about when you designed the brew house? I mean, do you have some real things in mind that you wanted to do? Uh, I did. I wanted something you know, that was very flexible that I could run uh, a lot of small batches through and have a lot of control, be able to you know, uh, blend different batches together to fill a fermenter. Cool. One other interesting thing about Adelbert's is that obviously it's inspired by someone in your family. This is a real special brewery yes, for you. Yes, it was uh, named after my brother in honor of my brother who died back in 2000. He was an avid beer drinker and he uh, was an avid storyteller and did a, had literally lived an exciting lifestyle. So each uh, style of the beer I've picked, you know, story, you know, a little funny story about his life, and you know, named that beer after that story. Yeah, actually, a lot of that stuff's online and on the bottles themselves. It is. They're actually some, that's some good reading, actually. Yes. It's, it's neat to see. Yeah, I was, you know, when I eat my cereal in the morning, I always read the cereal box. I figure when people <laughs> are drinking a beer, they probably like to read the label. Yeah, you said, and obviously you guys, they have a lot of bottles, um, you know, bottle condition, and that's one of the main ways you sell your beer, obviously. Yes, we do bottle condition, and our kegs are keg conditions. So uh, like I like to say every one of our kegs is a firkin. Awesome. That's that's really cool. They're all naturally carbonated. So talking a bit about the beers, I've kind of gone through and I've, I've, t I've took a bullet for the team and, and tried all of them in order here. And I think I, I think I'm still lucid. But first, the Philosophizer, um, a saison but with a bit of a twist. Like I actually really like this one. A really light, good lemony, peppery. What was your thinking on the on the saison? Well, all my beers are trying to hit the uh, BJP style guidelines. You know, pretty much uh, in the center. You know, I'll do Belgian styles. So, but I like to generate a lot of esters but not go overly hoppy, not overly malty, you know, very balanced on, on all the styles. So Philosophizer, yes, it does have a little bit of spices in it, a little peppery is the Seeds of Paradise yeah. that you're probably tasting. You know, very, oh, nice. very, but I try not to overdo anything. It should always be, I feel, you know, in a balanced in the style. So nothing overpowers. Oh, wonderful. The, the Triple B is next, and the Triple B, really nice fruity, wonderful fruit esters on the nose, very, very light and delicate on the palate. And that, that one amazes me that it has so many esters in it because it's really Pilsner malt and uh, yeast. It's, it really does. It's and just some it's, minor hops in it. I mean, it's a very, for such a, a flavorful beer, it's a very, my, uh, very simple ingredient list. Right. Next was the um, Dancing Monk, which is a, a double. But look, I found it a little lighter in, in color than a lot of the doubles, but very still rich in flavor. Like I thought, I thought you know, nice caramel, nice, nice rich sweetness. What was? Is there anything special you're doing there to get it to get it like this? Um, yeah. So I use uh, brown sugar, and uh, still a lot of Munich malt. Uh, like the Scratch and Hippo, which we'll talk about a little yeah. bit later. There's a lot of Munich malt in it as well. Uh, yeah, so more of a, a Munich, which is a lighter, dark malt, I guess. A more flavorful malt, and I use a lot more of that instead of uh, a little bit of a colored malt. Right, and I think I actually had this with some food, and it was just fabulous. I had some nachos over the whip in, and it was really, really good. I was like, I commented, man, this beer is really good with food, which is one of the goals you're going with a lot of these beers. Too. Yes, yeah, everything we're uh, trying to uh, drive the, you know, we like doing the food pairing, and so that's one of our main, uh, you know, thrusts, you know, balanced beers and then uh, food pairings. Yeah, well, that's really cool. 
Um, Naked Nun, it's a wit, I think with, with some spices as well. What kind of stuff are you doing there? It's uh, coriander and oil, orange peel. Very uh, pretty traditional. Very traditional, standard wit. Yeah, same thing, I've, uh, I like to keep it uh, fairly muted. You know, not overpowered. You know, I, I don't really like wits that are really strong coriander. Yeah, I found this, I felt the, the body was nice and light and a really great warm weather beer. Like, you know, here in Austin, Texas, it's a little bit warm this time of year. Just a tad. Yeah. Just a tad. And we're, we're even in the cool room here and it's yeah. still, we're still, we're a little still sweating. A, little, a little sweating. But uh, yeah. yeah, that was a really nice, uh, nice um, warm weather beer. And, and again, nice food beer. The Black, Black Rhino. Rhino is, that was something special. This is a kind of unusual beer though. It's like, it I is. Guess, it, it, this one, um, the first pass of it I did just as an experiment um, and uh, added some bread and bacteria to it, it um, and it came out funky and that's probably something we'll do as a production beer in a year or two. For now I'm just going to do um, the standard version just with a Trappist. Kind of small small batch? Or, right. Okay. Yeah, so long term I will do a specialty version like this one. For now we're just uh, you know, doing it here on the tap wall just right. as a specialty. Yeah, and it was really, I mean it was wonderful. I, I'm a big sour fan. It was like, you know, it was interestingly funky up front. Right. But still some good chocolate in there. Mm -hmm. And then some sour at the end. It was a really, really nice combination of flavors. Um, at the end, we have the, the, the grand finale. Yeah, the Scratch and Hippo, that's by far been our most popular beer. It's very popular in all the tap walls and uh, at the retailers it's as well. It's a beer to guard. Beer to guard, yes. It's, what's, that, uh, what's that style mean? What's the... Uh, French uh, countryside ale. It's uh, you know, very clean, very, um, almost say simple. It's not yeah. uh, overpowering by hops by any means. It's more uh, malt. And again, I've used a lot of uh, uh, medium colored malt, you know, Munich malt in it right. as well. Um, nice, know, really nice body to that one. I think it's got a real nice. Yes, nice. and very dry. You know, all of them I do very dry. We uh, you know, brew them so they're they're dry. So it's very little, very little right. residual sugars. And the probably the other, probably two other main things we're doing different from other people. We do a full decoction mash mm -hmm. on every beer, uh, which uh, part of the mash is pulled into a separate mash tun where we boil it for a while. And that adds some uh, mallard reaction, some caramelization to it. The other difference is we have um, all our malts are Bohemian floor malts. So we import them directly from Europe and went over there, uh, met with the maltster, toured the malt house. Awesome. So, so they're all small batch, fairly tightly controlled, uh, you know, done on the old you know, world process on a stone floor, right. uh, neat place. That's cool. Yeah, no, it's awesome you went out there to check it out. I mean, yeah. it's really great to source what you're using because part, part of the idea behind the show is to sort of show folks what what you know the people behind the beers it's great for you to be you know going out there and checking out the ingredient sources next well. to the water that's the biggest ingredient in there so i thought it was prudent yeah. to to go make sure we have the right malts that's wonderful so what, what i normally do at this point is i'll, I'll declare my favorite and you know i'm, so, I'm terribly torn because the, the black rhino is is pretty cool and it's, it's as a special beer i'll, I'll kind of give that a special special nod but i mean i think the philosophizer for me i'm a big saison fan i think you nailed it it's a delicious good delicious Thank saison you. so my favorite um Great setup. I mean, you guys, you guys were very aggressive with a lot of lot of recipes right out the gate. Um, you're doing great. I mean, this and there's is there's still more to come. I just you got, ordered, we got more. You got more in the back. Pocket. I just ordered a truckload of barrels, so we're gonna start taking several of these wines and uh, run them uh, through red wine barrels. That's awesome. So, so thanks very much. I really appreciate uh, being on there. Normally, I, I grab a glass. I'm gonna yeah, grab one. Yeah, yeah. Grab one. We gotta do a cheers here. All right, your, I'm gonna grab the wit. I think. Pick your poison. Thank all you. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Nazdrovia, skol, all those things. Thank you, folks. Delicious. Thank you.